Let me get started. Um, uh, as we get other folks coming in, we can mark them uh, uh, present. Um, let's see. Uh, do we have Lauren uh, yet? Not not yet on Lauren. No. Uh, Tess Healy has Tess rung in yet? No, no Tess, not yet. Uh, how about Paulina? Not yet. Carla, I saw Carla. Hello, Carla. How are you? Um, I'm here. Um, Jim Levy is here. Greg is here. Hello, Greg. And Elise is here. So uh, I'd like to just take a quick minute to welcome both Greg and Elise. And if you'd like to say hello for a minute, Greg, if you'd like to say hello to the committee. And uh, Paulina has just joined us. Uh, Kind of what your uh, what some of your goals are, and um, and say hello to the folks. So you have the floor. Sure. Um, hi everyone. It's really good to meet you all. Um, I'm Greg. I am from Niskuna. I grew up here. Um, went to Niskuna High School. Uh, then went away to school to study planning um, in Toronto, in New York City. Um, and so I just received my master's of urban planning. Um, now I'm uh, back here in Niskayuna, um, and I'm really looking forward to this opportunity uh, to serve the town in its complete streets initiatives. Um, I frequently bike and walk um, in Niskayuna, take advantage of the Flower Hill Road, road Extension, um, and would have loved if that existed when I was in high school, it really would have um, improved my ability to get around when I didn't have a car um, and see my friends and all of that. Um, so I'm looking forward to helping the town um, and on initiatives that will change other people's lives in the way that has changed mine. <laughs> so Greg, can you successfully get across Rosendale Road when you come down Flower Hill without uh, risking your life or? Uh... It can be a challenge sometimes. I think that not everyone's still familiar with, like, you know, you're supposed to stop when you see a pedestrian. Um, I've noticed some improvement over time, but yeah, <laughs> that can be a challenge occasionally. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, welcome aboard. Thank and you. Elise, would you like to say hello to us, even though you're an old friend from uh, your mom being on the committee and you helping us with our bike rodeo a couple of years ago, but... Uh, Please say hello. So I'm Elise. I'm the student representative for this committee this year. Um, as he said, I was a little bit involved a couple of years ago when my mom planned the first bike rodeo for the town hall. But um, this year, I'm actually on the committee, and I'm I'm excited to help make Niskuna more ac accessible for bikes and runners because I don't have a car, I can't drive, and I think it's important that everyone bike a little bit more around town. At least tell us, uh, if you were in middle school and you had to go to Iroquois Middle School and you lived in your home on Via Del Mar, would you be able to uh, bike to Iroquois, do you think, successfully in spring and fall? I did and do that and I can do that, but um, that's because I have, I have a special cyclocross bike. I don't know if you know what cyclocross is, but it's for it's really good for riding through mud. And um, I wouldn't go through my route now, but it's you have to go across a bunch of really muddy and rocky hills. And I think if you just have a road bike or even a commuter bike, it would not be possible. Okay. It's Rosendale Road is really dangerous to bike on. There's yes. not much of a shelter. Well, uh, thinking about a path that would take you on uh, Windsor Drive, then Fox Hollow, down to Hempstead, through River Road Park and the back way to Iroquois. Could you do that on your bike, do you think? Yes, that's what I did. Okay, good. Although I took Briar Ridge. Uh, Briar Ridge, yes. Yeah. Good, okay. Well, uh, I noticed that you have uh, have some experience grant writing, so uh, we'll try to take advantage of that if we may. And you have some thoughts about uh, bike lanes and uh, uh, we were just talking before the meeting that a lot of roads in Niskuna, um, we have some busy ones like Troy Road, Baltown Road, but a lot of other streets are not that much local traffic and are very bikeable and walkable. And so uh, you've got the electronic map today of our complete streets. And so that's something we want to look at to see you know, how we can encourage town residents to begin to use some of the pathways that the Safe Routes to School Committee identified and would help us get around the town. So 
Anyway, uh, welcome to Greg and welcome to Elise, and thank you both for joining. Okay, um, secondly, let's uh, talk about the uh, minutes. I have, uh, and, and other people may have a couple of thoughts, the minutes of uh, September 25. Uh, Laura, I have just a couple of things to add. Uh, September 25, line 31, it says for a crosswalk, that should say on River Road at St. Joseph's Drive. It, it now says, uh, yeah, at St. Joseph's Drive. And uh, line 53 should say developer instead of develops. And line 115 should say St. Joseph's and not St. David's Lane. Um, anybody else have a, a correction to the September 25 minutes that we, you want to put forward? Okay. Uh, for October 30, line 49, uh, should say supportive and believe that a parking area. Uh, anyone else have a correction for October 30? Okay, um, and December 11, um, just looking at the December 11, I, I actually don't have a, a uh, correction to those, but I did note that um, we were going to ask the police chief about whether the committee could ask the town to put its counter out on various roads and uh we're uh, going to do that laura had mentioned that she's going to ask the police about uh, if data is stored on the counter and whether we might be able to ask them to put it on certain roads because there are some roads that we've done some work on or had some ideas about that we're wondering about uh, collecting data and then also uh, we noted in the December 11 that we we're going to ask the town attorney whether uh, sidewalks, sidewalk districts are legal in this unit. So we're going to ask the uh, town attorney uh, about that. Okay. Um, I uh, does anyone else have any uh, comments on September 25, October 30, and December 11 minutes of the Complete Streets Committee? Speak now and have your comments memorialized forever, or. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, in that case, I'd like to move acceptance of the minutes with corrections for September 24, October 20, and December 10. And uh, do I have a second out there? Paulina seconds. Uh, all in favor of accepting the minutes, if you just kind of raise your hand there, accepting those minutes. Okay. Any objection to uh, any of the minutes? Okay. Uh, Thank you, Laura. We'll accept the minutes. And uh, let's move on to public concerns. So let's recognize Laura and Ben Mastriani, who lives on Wyoming Avenue. Go ahead, Ben. Thank you. Are we okay? We, we can't hear you. How about now? Yes. Well, you can't hear me now. Okay, good. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I do live on Wyoming Avenue. Uh, my wife and I bought the house from my aunt that lived there before, um, about six years ago. And I've worked with Officer Stevens and a couple people. What we found out is, with a FOIL report, about 550 cars go by a day, because it's a cut through, and it's a little wider street than normal. So after six years, I finally got a, a slow down, you know, light up uh, speed limit sign across from the house, which was very appreciated. But the problem is the volume and it's very dangerous. We've had some near misses at the end. There's a yield sign. Nobody yields. When Lexington and Baker coming from towards the high school, there's no stop sign going that way. It's, it's real bad. Um, and I'm open to anything to help slow it down along with a lot of my neighbors that had sent things in before to the police meeting, I think, which is on Mondays or Tuesdays. Um, 
anything to do with vertical bumps or, you know, something to make people use McClellan and Knott Street as it was intended for. I mean, I've got this nice, quaint little house in old Niskayuna, and, and 550 cars go by a day. And I don't know if it's a bike path. Uh, I talked to uh, Laura about parking my car out in front. I did that. <laughs> it got hit twice. And once, once the guy that runs the Sunoco there clipped a mirror and somebody else ran into the back of it. Um, I, I'm up for anything to slow things down there so you can bring your dog for a walk and not put your life in your hands or be able to have a window open or your screen door open to have dinner and not have it be like a highway. So, Ben, is this cut through traffic coming off of McClellan to get down to? It was, it was about even. It was about even, sir. It was about 260 cars coming from Schenectady and the other part of it, about the same amount, heading from Niskayuna over down towards the apartment complex and down that way. Okay. So you're looking for some traffic calming things that might be on Wyoming Avenue or other We spaces. all are. Yeah, we all, trust me, all the, there's garbage thrown out. There's been some altercations. You put your hand up to slow down and somebody's screaming at you. Uh, a girl pushing a baby carriage coming around the yield sign. Somebody came down from Schenectady onto Wyoming and took a right turn, never stopped, and almost clipped her. Uh, all of the above. Okay. And uh, Chairman, my brother that... and I were talking, and we were thinking if there's a lot of support on his street, that may be a good place to do a demonstration project because it sounds like they've got a lot of data and they're working on it. And so it may be a really good area for us to hone in on for something that might work with a lot of support it, there. Yeah. We, we also had a FOIL report done, and after X amount of years, whatever 4 million cars were, as of six months ago, there was never a speeding ticket written. So then we had a couple policemen come over and, you know, stop a few people. But I, I hear what you're saying, and, and, and this is the right thing to do, have somebody plan, but I'm just wondering since I've been here for six years. Is it me or does everybody agree old Niskayuna should be 20 miles an hour? Well, we've had that conversation before. Um, I think the town board is definitely, I mean, from the conversation I, I've had with them interested in um, lowering the speed limit, they don't have the legislative right to do it without, um, without kind of getting themselves designated. Like I think Colony got itself designated to be able to regulate its own, its own speed limit. But this unit is not. Um, and I know, Jim, you unmuted yourself. You were following legislation that was going to release towns. Do you know what had become of that? Yeah, so, so in general, um, towns are not permitted to change speed limits without getting explicit permission from the state of New York. Um, so it's quite a process. Um, I have not heard anything new moving forward on that proposed legislation to give municipalities the right to change their own speed limits on their roads. Uh, but I do know it was being aggressively pursued, and it was coming out of Ithaca, actually. Um, someone out in, in the Ithaca area was, was looking to do that. So it, it is being discussed, but I haven't heard that it's moved forward. Obviously, there's a, there's a lot going on right now. But, um, but it is a top priority of a lot of people across the state to allow municipalities to be able to set their own speed limits. But, uh, yeah, that, that would be a, probably a pretty heavy lift right now, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, so, so I walk in the area and I know, I think, I haven't paid attention recently, but I think at the end of Wyoming, it, it, um, what is it, it uh, at Baker, it's a yield sign, right? Which is something I've never yeah. understood. Um, we'd have to look at that from an engineering perspective, but I've never really understood why there was a yield sign there because people blow through that all the time and there are a lot of walkers yeah. down there. So I, I've always yeah. liked to, to, to see that maybe become a stop sign, but we'd have to do an engineering ass assessment on that um, to make that happen. That's not traffic calming, but that is a safety um, consideration potentially. Right. But I'll tell you, the bumps, especially a lot of those cars, the low riders constantly cutting through middle of the night, you hear noises and loud music, you know, all that stuff. Uh, I know they don't like to plow them, but I know on Mordella and Colony they have them, and it really helped people quit cutting over to Central Avenue. Uh, because I think unless we do something like that or a bike path or, or vertical bumps, it's people are just 
saying, be without a sign, just like Lexington from the high school, going, you can go all the way through Baker, all the way to the other end, and there's no stop. And, and Lexington, you could have a car side by side, almost like Wyoming, too. In Lexington, you know, it's one way. So... I like Laura's idea of considering it as a demonstration project. And Laura, I, Laura, I think you were just talking, you're on mute, but um, I, I like your idea of, of considering it as a demonstration project since there's a lot of support from the neighbors. Yeah, and um, you know, it is in Ole Miss Vienna, but it's slightly wider. I think it is slightly, well, we, we could go and see. I definitely think if there's a lot of support from the neighbors, um, it would be great to put something out there and see if it helps. Um, Sounds good. I think it's a wider street too. Um, I, I'm trying to remember, I used to run there a lot where it turns into curling. And I think the street is a little bit wider than other, especially in Old Miss Vienna. So it might work uh, better for the uh, demo that we did the last time. And, and as we all know, wider roads encourage higher speeds. So that's definitely an issue. If and I don't, I don't know if this is true and it's not something that we can fix, but I think there are times when like a, a GPS routing software, software actually takes you down Wyoming. Not that I think that we can fix that, <laughs> but I think that I have actually had like Google route me down Wyoming once or twice before. If, if the yeah, highway superintendent objected to speed bumps, could we consider speed platforms? which yeah, the snow plow would be able to go over. Uh, it would slow traffic, but the highway superintendent would not say it will tear up a, a snow plow so that that, you know, if we had two platforms on the street. Sure. Something, man, I'm trying to think of what some traffic calming devices would be that might work, but that's something the committee would have to look at. But that seems to me, if the road is narrow, that either looking at a, a chicane, which you know, it's kind of a bump out where you've got some flowers and, and you kind of have to go back and forth like we had. If the street's too narrow, then maybe we could look at a speed platform or uh, whatever. But I, 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 yeah, I did have a quick question if I could. Um, because when I went to one of the other meetings, Officer Stevens was mentioning about Story Avenue and, you know, GPS sends everybody through there. Do we have any control of this? Who, who's the ruler of GPS to say, what are you telling people to go that way for? Is that something that's been discussed? Yeah, I, I have reached out to Google once on a different item, and they are absolutely 100% non-responsive. And to my knowledge, there's no legislation that says that you can't use residential streets or things for their um, for their routing software, to my knowledge, we don't have anything, and I have actually tried to reach out to them, and they don't respond. Okay. But I, but I do see. I, I mean, I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't drive over there a whole lot. I do think that occasionally you get routed up to Wyoming. It, it could be local yeah. motorists check the route that's suggested by their phone, and they try a couple things, and they find that uh, gee, Wyoming is the best road and so just part of their regular practice that's what they jump on to get from McClellan down to Baker Avenue and the other way so right that's why they use it okay anybody else have a I, I know I was half expecting Jim Levy to say Mr. Mastroni get your neighbors all to park their cars on the street and uh, you know the folks who drive through will have to zigzag back and forth and it'll slow them down and uh, they may well, go to another street, but that's one way of getting something done fairly soon, uh, I guess, and it will slow traffic, but- uh, he, already, he already did, Bill, he's been hit two times. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, my, 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 my pitch always is that, you know, if, if you set two, two cars offset from one another, it does the same thing as a chicane. One car alone is, is a little more vulnerable Two will get more people's attention, but yeah, I mean, if you've been hit twice, obviously you've tried that. Um, but the uh, the idea of parking cars on the street will slow people down. It narrows the road, but I think it sounds like we need more than one. Um, you need a number of cars parked on the road to really get people's we did, attention. We did that. 
Yeah, we, we do do that. And one time we did it, and it wasn't on purpose. A Brinks truck. I mean, we have 18 wheelers go. That's another thing. We have 18 yeah. wheelers go through some big truck with graffiti. This always comes through. We had a Brinks truck that came through from the Niski Unisign and couldn't get past my house. And you could see the concern there. <laughs> he backed up in reverse because Brinks trucks don't want to stop unless they're at a bank. And he sure. turned around and went up Grenaside, which probably gets five cars a day. So yeah. it does work a little bit. On that, I don't know if the PD's got a camera that they could put across from Baker just to uh, film the traffic that comes down Wyoming so that if there were trucks that were shouldn't be using that road, you'd at least get a license plate number so that the Niskuna PD could uh, write a citation. And uh, I mean, that would be a possibility, I think, for at least for big trucks who should be using the road. But I have to take Sounds that good. up to them. Okay, so I think okay. Ben, like maybe Ben, if we are working on um, developing projects, I think we should put Wyoming on our list. And if it works, we'll reach out to you and you could coordinate with the neighbors. Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Thank before you. we leave you, Ben, do you have the name of one or two other neighbors that would like to see something done? I mean, do we assume the whole block is behind this, or is there one or two folks besides you that are strong advocates for trying to do something? Oh yeah. They're, they're there's, there's more. I know the guy to the left of me, Chris, and the guy to the right of me, Mike, is to the right of me heading towards Connected. And I talked to the people on the other side. Uh, I, I can come up with some names and email email uh, this problem. Okay. Yeah, okay. These, these, type, these types of things are best done when they when they come from the neighbors and the people living on the block. Um, so if we can get get support early on and, and make sure we have you know significant support, that would be fantastic. Okay, good. Okay, thank you, Ben. Thank you very much for joining us and bringing this concerns. We're, we'll put our thinking hats on and see if we can't do something uh, to help out. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, uh, number two, Fieldstone Drive speed issue. Uh, Laura, can you brief us on this yeah. one quickly? I'll just do this one quickly. I obviously think that when we have a person who is willing to attend our meeting and you know, has a variety of neighbors lined up, that that's probably a really important thing to consider when we're considering where we locate our demonstration projects. But I did hear from the police and there may be, um, I don't know why these are here, there may be kind of the same support for this on Fieldstone, but um, this like North Allendale comes from Route 5 here and then hits Fieldstone. And this section of Fieldstone is pretty wide open like we're talking like just like this section here it's gonna be i'm gonna crush my computer um and they received uh like some so uh, uh, Lord, does fieldstone connect console road to yeah state street or yes. did you show us on the map here i'm a little uh yes sorry okay this is this is can you guys see my cursor Oh, yeah, okay. This is State Street down here, Route 5. And okay. Allen, and so essentially Allendale is a pretty wide road here. And you can come down Allendale and hit Fieldstone, and then you have this little curve. But as soon as you hit this straightaway on Fieldstone, it's very wide open, and the police are seeing high speeds here. They had a couple complaints, and they measured them, and they are high. Um, and I think it's because, like, there's a bike path. These are new homes. There's not any street trees. And it's a very wide road. So they actually reached out to us and said, listen, they're going to try enforcement. But this is, again, like, I think a geometry issue. Um, it is a it is a good, quick connection between Route 5 and Console Road. And it's so wide open that when you hit this straightaway, they're seeing some high speeds. So they're wondering if we have ideas, we want to try something. They volunteered that Fieldstone is probably a good place for us to work on things. Wide open, new, and people are seeing high speeds that they don't like, obviously. Do we know the width of Fieldstone, uh, the street? It's, well, so this is the multi-use path. Sorry, I zoomed way in, but I mean, it's it's pretty wide. This is just, but it's like, yeah, so I mean, it's, I guess, actually pretty standard, but 26. But it's got the multi-use path over here, which is good because it separates the um, pedestrian traffic from the cars. 
but um you know these are new homes big driveways n nobody's really parking on the street and they're seeing high speeds here yeah two two 13 foot lanes on a straightaway like that's a pretty wide run yeah it's what it's like I, I wonder if you can actually uh, I hit my Google I was looking at Wyoming Wyoming might feel wide but it doesn't actually look that much wider than sure. it's not a wide street um, but I think if you, like, you can see, where am I going? Here I am. I love so that. With, uh, you can see how I can Or anything be a possibility for Fieldstone to. Like, um, we, yeah, or median, you know how, I mean, yeah. it's wide and you have a lot of space and there aren't really, there isn't a whole lot that's interfering with something that you want to try to do speed mitigation here is what it looks like. They hit this straight away and they go boom. What about like plant, you know, erecting a, a more solid barrier between the actual street and the bike path and then yeah, yeah. having plant trees there or, you know, plant something that makes a, a visual barrier as well and then sort of breaks up that, that straight away, that, you know, perfect vision down the road or have something bump out. That, I feel like that's what it needs either a bump out or some, some kind of visual interruption. Especially so, on a construction like that, I'm sure those houses wouldn't mind yeah. something nice planted. And, and this is all town property over here, so you also have flexibility to try things. Anyway, so that one should go on our list, um, referred from the police department. Try thoughts, like I obviously think if we have neighbors reaching out to us, that might be number one, but this, you know, could be a number two, maybe. Definitely. Okay. Um, uh, can we move to Rosendale Road and Old, Old River Road and hear from Mr. Brownsey? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Brownsey, welcome to the complete speech. Go right ahead. Uh, hi. Yep. Uh, uh, thank you for, uh, for hearing my concerns. Um, so the, the county has proposed, and they had a, uh, a public uh, information meeting a couple of weeks ago on the uh, intersection improvements at Old River Road and uh, Rosenau Road. Um, if I can, I don't know if I can share my screen here. You can. I'm okay. talking to yeah. you. Okay. Um, okay. If, you hit, if you hit that present okay. now button and then hit your entire screen. Yep, there you go. Okay. I like the background music. Um, so the, let me see. So th this is the current intersection. Um, I'm sure everybody in the town is familiar with it. If you head to this, this end of old Niskayuna, uh, it, excuse me, this end of Niskayuna, which my neighbors have been commenting to me on WhatsApp that uh, this is old Niskayuna because it's the oldest part of Niskayuna. Um, but we, we understand the common definition of the other end of Niskayuna being old Niskayuna. Um, so the, the county has proposed this, this traffic circle, or this roundabout, excuse me, um, the, with the purpose of improving the average speed to the intersection and improving safety. Um, the county said on their meeting two weeks ago that they did not consider pedestrian or bicycle use when uh, coming up with this concept. And they, they had not done any study on existing pedestrian use or any possible future pedestrian use. Um, I think one thing to note about the the existing, you know, one of the benefits of a of a roundabout is you have a traffic calming effect. Um, I think with the existing uh, condition, um, we generally see in the neighborhood a, a traffic calming effect as cars have to navigate uh, down the hill and around the tight turn. So, so that. You know, additional benefit from the roundabout is, is probably not something that's going to be seen. Um, the justification for the project is that the current situation has a uh, accident high accident rate compared to uh, the standard three-way intersection um, with a with a single um, uh, co traffic control device. So this is about a 0 0.9 accident per, per million uh, entering vehicles. Uh, standard three-way intersection is in the state of New York is 0.19. Uh, accidents per million equivalent vehicles. So it's, it's quite high. 
Um, regular users of the road could probably identify the root cause as being the steep grade down roads and mill road, um, close proximity to guardrails, no room for errant vehicles, um, uh, some blind you know, sight lines as, as you're navigating the intersection. Um, and you can see kind of telltale signs on the guardrail when cars are coming down in adverse weather conditions, so oversteer into the guardrail, either you know at, at the section of the curve coming down with Nail Road or opposite the the, the intersection um, where Old River Road meets. Um, so the the CDTC uh, this is a, a project a description includes wider shoulders, increased safety in um, in a, the, the project in general is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. It's, it's the source of the funding. Um, however, this proposal from the county um, reduces a lot of the shoulders on the approach roads to this with where they're putting the guardrails and um, where they're putting the curbing for, for this. There's really, um, you know, nowhere to, uh, you know, nowhere that they've increased the shoulders except maybe in a, in a, a couple spots. Um, so, Mr. Brunzi, can I ask, are you supportive of as a way to manage this intersection? And uh, are you suggesting that there need to be some pedestrian or bike improvements to the roundabouts yeah. here? Yeah, or? yeah. So, um, yeah, I will tell me quickly. I have one more. So, they're only looking at vehicle uh, interactions. So, the um, I, I want to quickly go over what I know about that, and then I'll move on into what my opinion on the on what concerns this group as the pedestrian and bicycle uh, interactions on the road. Um, so, they're, they're, one of their goals is increased safety, and I think if you're not considering pedestrians, you're not going to increase safety um, through this intersection. Um, so, the state average for a three-legged roundabout is debatable. With this, this is three-legged because there's there's a driveway adding a fourth leg to this. Is about 0.5 accidents per million vehicles, um, with no changes to distance to guardrails, with a decreased shoulder size, with no changes to the approach grade on Rosendale Road. There's no reason to believe that this won't also have a much higher than state average accident rate for this type of intersection, making it more dangerous for automobiles. If it's more dangerous for automobiles, it's going to also be more dangerous for the pedestrians and bicycles that interact with those automobiles. Um, the resulting impact on um, the uh, design change as far as it uh, relates to pedestrians is um, anybody who's currently walking and has access to a car will need to use a car and anybody who does not have access to the car will not be able to safely navigate this intersection. It's going to change from at the moment if you are walking up or down the hill, you're brave. Um, I would say with the location of the guardrail on North Mill Road, it's going to be a reckless decision to choose to be a pedestrian on this road. Um, the county has counted that nobody uses this intersection to walk. Um, and um, so that that's why it was not considered. However, if you look at the facilities around uh, the intersection, we have uh, a few hundred meters away on Rosendale Road is Lions Park, which is the access to uh, the, the bike path. Um, along Old River Road and uh, Rosendale Road, there's, there's a pretty densely packed area with a lot of smaller houses. There's a couple apartment buildings. Um, so there's, there's a lot of people that do actually need to walk on this road to commute. And then at the top of Rosendale Road, there's a sidewalk spur that connects to there's numerous businesses, restaurants, CDTA bus stop is about 400 meters away, which means that this this neighborhood is in the coverage area of that bus stop. Um, and then there's a lot of people on the other side of uh, of Choice Connected Road, either in Y Point or off Y Road, that are walking down Rosendale Road, using the crosswalk on Choice Connected Road, walking down Rosendale Road to access access the bike path. And I think with their proposal here, they have zero. They've said they have zero consideration for pedestrians. So I'm, I'm, you know, the one of the goals from the CDTC and the source of the funding is to reduce greenhouse gases. The most effective way to do that would be to reduce a vehicle trip, and they've made it impossible for people to do that. If you're living on Fly Road and you want to get to the bike path with this configuration, you would have to drive, which is, you know, is, is counter to the goal of their project. Um, 
So uh, I'm hopeful that the town and the, and the county can work together to maybe to make put some consideration to pedestrians in this intersection. Um, I think probably a more beneficial uh, uh, layout would be a realignment of the existing intersection um, with wider shoulders, as is the, the, the state statement goal of the project. And you know, ideally, either room for a future sidewalk or a sidewalk, but at minimum, shoulders as wide as as exist today. So you'd like to see a a walk pathway of some sort that would get pedestrians from Troy Road down to the Circle and at least to Lions Park for walkers. Yes, and, and also, I mean, people moving about the neighborhood, either from the houses down around this circle up to Troy Road, because there's a lot of uses, you know, there's a lot of facilities up there, or just um, as they have it designed, navigating from Old River Road to Rosendale Road without having to walk uh, in the road. Yep. So if, if there's a guardrail basically on top of the white line for the, for the uh, travel lane, if you're a pedestrian, you're walking in the road, uh, which is unacceptable. A at the moment, there's about a, a one foot, uh, like going up Rosendale Road, there's about a one foot shoulder, and they take that down too. If you look at the drawing, it's a little difficult to see in this one, but um, they basically take that down to, to zero. Okay. If you look along. So this green line is the guardrail, which is right up against the edge of the road and the same thing on, on this side. So there's really no protected area for pedestrians. And then a pedestrian trying to cross this uh, this roundabout, there's really no obvious place to in, improvise a crosswalk. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing not to have a crosswalk, but how would a pedestrian even, I, I think it feel like everybody would have a different way of navigating the circle of a pedestrian, which would be, you know, make drivers unsure where somebody might be walking. Uh, two questions, Laura. It, it, has the county committed to a roundabout for this intersection, or are they still looking at other options? And B, as we look at the turnaround, is there enough physical space to have walk side paths that would uh, come down Rosendale Road and, and get around this? I mean, is there enough space for pedestrian pathway in conjunction with the run um well for some reason we're getting a little bit of feedback do you mind when you're not speaking if you stay on mute and then you can just unmute as soon as you have something to say i don't know why your computer is having that but um i think that um the i mean the town has been involved in the development of the options um, and I think that we just recently heard from our residents and um, about some of the concerns that we had. And I feel like this is a little bit similar to the roundabout in River and Rosendale Road in that, you know, we received some of these um, options and then we, we did take a look at them. I know the Complete Streets um, Committee did have an opinion on that one. We did not want to see a traffic light there. And so we, you know, did push the county towards a... Um, towards an option that we thought was the best for our community. The, the county is not obviously required to listen to us. It's a county road. And I don't know what the sizes of the right of ways are because the town hasn't been involved in the design. But I do think that once we're made aware of the project and we hear from residents that it's perfectly appropriate for us to reach out to the county, you know, as best we can and with such, you know, understanding that they're trying to fix a problem. It's very, very high accident. Um, intersection and see if we can make sure that they're including um, pedestrian amenities. That's kind of our job as a complete streets committee, I would think. Um, so I don't know what, it doesn't show the right of way boundaries on that line. I don't know if you could fit sidewalks on the inside of the guardrail or if we want to look at the other options and see if they actually make more sense um, for pedestrians and bicyclists in there and see if that's really something that we'd want to push for. I typically like traffic circles, but they are sometimes more cumbersome for bicycles and pedestrians, and I completely agree. I mean, this is conceptual, but they definitely need to be conceptually making sure that pedestrians and bicycle, bicyclists could get through here. I would think that would be my opinion, that we could reach out and say, you know, we were reviewing it from a Complete Streets com um, 
perspective, then we definitely like to make sure that you're considering this. I think it's, I mean, we could pull up our map. Our map. What do you guys think? Laura, this uh, is Jim Lee uh, has pointed out to us earlier that we missed an opportunity with the roundabout at River and Rosendale Road to have the design and the work done there to include bike and pedestrian amenities. And we're now talking about a bike path on Rosendale Road or a side path that maybe would get to the Lysha Kill Preserve, but certainly would get down perhaps to the roundabout. But, you know, we shrugged a little now that once we get bikers and pedestrians to the roundabout, there's no sidewalk or bike path there that would go along river or go the other way on Rosendale Road. So in well, some ways, it would be a but they actually designed that to have a space for the sidewalk. It was, okay. it was in there. It just, it ended up not going into construction because okay. of costs and stuff like that. For this one, I think we would want to look if, you know, even if they can't, well, this one's a little bit different because you can definitely walk around the, <laughs> the River Rosendale sidewalk. Not perfect, but like, um, you know, you, but they left room for a sidewalk on the River okay. Rosendale. Well, I was saying getting down the hill on Rosendale Road might be a little challenge with the road being kind of narrow, uh, which Mr. Brownsey probably could attest to. But if we think about, gee, we'd like to have a way for people on the other side of uh, Troy Road or even ride the sidewalk on Troy Road or uh, Mohawk Avenue and other places that once you get down the hill, you'd like a, a walk or bike path where you could get down the hill and then you could get over to, to Lions Park to access the, the bike path. So we might want sidewalks on both sides of Rosendale Road from this traffic circle down to Lions Park so that, uh, you know, people can safely get down there. And, and I mean, I don't know, I guess if they're doing the work of a traffic circle, why would it make sense for us to ask them to, you know, put the pedestrian access in as part of the construction of the project and do that while they're there? Because we know it's needed, so that would be my view. Anyone else? I do know people from my neighborhood that um, go down from Algonquin and they ride down Rosendale all the way to the bike path. So, I mean, I know people who would benefit from that. Um, Yeah, I, I think the biggest issue from my perspective and, and some neighbors is is it's um it's it's already a challenge. They're doing spending the money to improve the intersection and they're making it worse for pedestrians. So I, I don't think that's an acceptable solution. Okay. Anyone else have an observation they want to add based on looking at the roundabout or whether we as a committee should support asking the county to take a look at uh, pedestrian access at this roundabout? I think Paul brings up a very good point and it, it seems worth asking, um, you know, bringing it forward. Okay. Yeah, this, this is Jim, I, I, I agree. Um, you know, I don't live over there. I, I do go down a lot. I used to drive through that intersection a lot. I do know it's very constrained as you go up the hill. Um, you know, the road goes right into the hillside. So if we were looking at widening the road there, it would be uh, probably require a retaining wall and that all gets very expensive very quickly. But I do think, you know, the point of, of our group is to talk about improving pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure. And it looked like actually on one end of the roundabout, they're looking, were they proposing a path that would go straight into the park off the roundabout? No, so um, at a fourth leg. Yeah, where, where that roundabout is, there is a there's currently a house there, so they're moving right. back towards the river, and that's the oh, driveway. So that's the driveway. The house. Yeah, but I still think we should be looking into you know the possibility of pedestrian infrastructure, um, you know, for any of these intersections, and certainly you know pedestrian safety. One of the things I've been starting to talk about as a, as a planner with municipalities that we don't see around here um, is actually mini roundabouts and. I don't, I'm not a traffic engineer. I'm not, a, so, you know, I can't tell you whether or not it would fit there or not, but if a mini roundabout was something that would be considered, it would technically pot potentially give us more room to work with, um, you know, so that you'd have more swing room in the center, giving us maybe, oops, sorry, knock my mic over, uh, maybe a little more room to work with on the outside. But again, I'm, I'm not a traffic engineer, so I can't say that it would work in that instance, but 
it is something I'm, I've been starting to discuss with communities more, um, looking into the ability to do that. So I, so yeah, I, I think, you know, I guess to, to sum it up, I would say, I think we should definitely ask the County to, to look into, you know, all options that are out there. Um, but it is, it is a tough site for sure. Okay. Well, uh, so I think it's fair to say as a committee that, uh, we would send a letter to the, the county saying that uh, Michigan to Complete Streets has reviewed this and uh, we're supportive of the county looking at uh, some pedestrian and bike access that would be uh, part of this project and would help walkers on the Old River Road and get from Troy Road down to Rosendale Road and walkers and pedestrians get to Lions Park to get access to the hike and bike path. Okay, anyone else on this project before we move on? Okay, thank you very much, Paul, and thanks for giving us your input. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, moving on uh, to new business on the priority project letters approval. Um, Laura sent out the uh, letters to us, which uh, we decided uh, at our, in our earlier meetings that we would do um, a priority letter to state, county, town, and school district, where we would uh, artic articulate our three main concerns for them to uh, uh, work on. And the uh, first one, uh, our letter to the state, uh, it's kind of the same as last year, uh, a school zone for Craig Elementary School, a crosswalk for Craig Elementary getting over to the Schenectady JCC, and uh, Jim Levy had uh, shared some detailed plans that uh, uh, he had prepared or worked with the Capital District Transportation Committee uh, to prepare. So uh, again, that would be part of our request to the state. And then uh, a pedestrian, number three is a pedestrian connection to Mohawk Hudson Bike Trail. So uh, as Greg mentioned, Flower Hills got uh, half a million dollar uh, bike path connection down to the, the bike path there, uh, but lots of folks can't get access to it because they can't get across Troy Road, even with a police escort. And so uh, we're asking the state basically to say, look, we need uh, some ways for pedestrians and bikers to get across Troy Road. And uh, I think either Douglas Cord or WTRY or would almost let the state make a decision there uh, on what's best, but we would like to bring it to their attention. And um, one of the things that I, I mentioned at the top of the meeting is that, you know, we uh, have requests to state, county, school district, and town that we might want to think about a delegation of folks from the Streets Committee to ask for an appointment for these folks so that uh, Mark Sicaldo, is that how it's pronounced? Um, uh, that we'd want to just ask him for a half an hour of his time to talk about, to kind of go over the, the Craig Elementary project and to have him look at Troy Road and say, we need some way for pedestrians to get across. And, you know, we're talking Flower Hill, but we might also say in down the road, we may be looking at, uh, you know, a crosswalk at Mohegan or other places that will help people get across the road. But anyway, this is our letter to the state. Um, our letter to uh, i'm kind of new to this so i don't really understand how these processes work but is that basically what you do is you send a letter and say uh, these are our priorities and we want to initiate a discussion with you and then you make an appointment and you follow up and you talk about it well or, uh, there's really no like call to like you know in the business world we would say a call to action like I would write this letter and I would say, here, here's our priorities that we've identified. Here's what I want you to do, or here's what I'm asking you to do. And we've kind of just said, hey, we've got some grant money. We've, these are our priorities. We're working on getting a grant. We understand you've got budget constraints. We'd like to talk about it, but we've really not said specifically what we want from them. And if I got this letter, I'd be like, eh, they got grant money. Let that uh, work. Exactly, uh, in, in response to that, that when you look at our complete streets map, and even uh, you know a couple of years ago, you know we uh, have 
maybe lots of things that we'd like to ask the state about, which right. would be, hey, make the uh, the timing on the lights at, uh, as Elise mentioned, on Balltown and Knott Street, where we want a hike and bike path going down Balltown Road to get to Aqueduct Road. We have lots of things that we'd like to ask the state about. Matter of fact, we don't think even one or, or that one crosswalk on Troy Road is enough. And I guess our thinking at the time was, you know, we don't want to drown people by sending each one of them 10 items to do because then they just put it in the pile saying that complete streets committee in this unit, they're, they're in dreamland. Right. And so what we decided we would do is we would boil it down to our three top priorities, the three top that we want to ask the state, the three top that we want to ask the county, the three top that we want to ask the school district, and the three top we want to ask the town. And part of it is we don't want to be brushed off as go get some grant money. Part of our view is, you know, the money that the state has for transportation is not all just about roads and cars. Part of the money they have in the state budget should also include bicyclists and pedestrians. And the same with the money that we pay in our county taxes, that some of that money should be used for pedestrians and cars. I mean, pedestrians and bicyclists, not just cars and, and kind of the school district. And so people on the committee said, let's not drown them. Let's pick our top three. We'll send them the letter with the top three. And, and as I was saying, to your point, what we may need to do is schedule an appointment so that we have a, a subset of folks on complete streets committee that we ask for some time uh, for with Mr. Sacaldo. Sec so we take our big complete streets map to show them we're serious about pedestrian and, and bike access in the town. And, you know, we have requests to the county, and, but here's our top three for you. And the one is the Craig School where we get a, a crosswalk at Craig, but also just to say, you know, we've got Troy Road. It's almost like a moat. People can't get across there. It's a state road. We understand that the state wants the traffic to move through there, but bikers and pedestrians need some way to get across the road. And so we're thinking about, you know, making the sidewalks on Troy Road, not just pedestrians only, but both bike and pedestrian. And so without telling the state exactly, we're just sending a prayer to the state. We need some crosswalks here. We think maybe Douglas Court or somewhere that gets us over to the bike path where you can go down to Flower Hill would be a good first place to do it. But, you know, we're not asking for grant you know, money. We're saying to the state. Like we have X amount of grant money. We're asking you for X amount of money to get this done. Or we're asking you to. We're asking the state to spend state money to do that crosswalk and to uh, use state money to do that. They've got it in their budget. And if you don't ask, you don't get. And so we pay our state taxes. They got money to spend. And we're saying, put these projects into your state budget for our town. And it's not just about roads for more pavement. We're saying we need some improvements that help pedestrians and bikers. And this is what we want. Okay. okay. Sorry to get on my uh, preacher's pedestal. You, you wind me up, Pauline. <laughs> You can always tell a poor preacher from a good one. The poor ones go on too long, which is uh, certainly my fault. But OK, uh, for the county, again, we're asking Rory Fluman uh, two crosswalks. We're asking for the crosswalk at River Road and St. David's Lane. We did the traffic counts on that. We have a I think I haven't looked at our survey, but I believe there's support there as well. But we did do. The pedestrian counts. We also want a, a push button crosswalk at River Road, I mean, at Knott Street and Regent Street, which where we did the pedestrian counts there. We want to ask them to do that. We know that there are going to be improvements in the Knott Street block where we'll get some, some crosswalks, but uh, we've got the school folks going middle school and high school that cross at uh, Regent and Knott Street. And uh, we also just want residents that live there to be able to have a spot to uh, cross a busy road there. And so we're, we're encouraging the crosswalk there. And then finally, uh, the third thing is we wanna see a side path on Rosendale Road, which is a county road. Um, we see the school district is moving middle school, seventh and eighth grade to Iroquois. They're moving fifth and sixth grade to Van Antwerp. So there's going to be, we hope, more bike traffic there. We want to discourage car traffic. 
we want to encourage bike traffic, then uh, I've talked about the, the bike pathway, uh, you know, Windsor Drive to Briar Ridge and or Fox Hollow, Hempstead through River Road Park, you get a back way to Iroquois Middle School. But as Carla has pointed out in her letter, there's a lot of people north and south of Rosendale Road that you know they need bike access to Iroquois Middle School and having that side path on there will allow lots of folks uh, north and south of Rosendale Road to be able to go both directions to get back to Upper Union, but to get all the way down to the Cult Preserve. So that's our third item uh, for the county. And again, we're just going to the county with our top three requests, which are those. Um, we're going to uh, the school district. Our top three requests there, again, are the same Craig Elementary School to realign the driveway at Craig. One is to make it a school zone, but to get the driveway at Craig realigned maybe with uh, the property that's uh, owned by the, the JCC and uh, then get a, a crosswalk there, which uh, to our new folks, it's possible we can ask Jim Levy to uh, send that plan with a nice color diagrams to everybody on the committee so everybody knows what we're talking about there. And then uh, the for the school district, again, we're, we're asking the school to pave an asphalt trail that basically would go from Rosendale School to the uh, uh, line with River Road Park and so part of our request to the town would be to ask the town to pave the trails in River Road Park so that you could actually get to Rosendale Elementary and uh, to Iroquois Middle School on a hike and bike path. So basically, if you're Elise Corbin and you live on Via Del Mar, you could actually bike safely without going across a, a busy road or the one busy road you'd have to cross would be Balltown Road. But after that, you'd be able to take fairly quiet hike and bike trails to get all the way to the school. And it could work the other way in reverse. People, even a sixth grader, fifth and sixth grade could conceivably ride the other way to get to Van Antwerp if they cross Balltown. So uh, that's our request of the school district. And we did send a letter uh, to Cosmo that we looked at each of the school campuses and we had input you know, uh, to their engineers on here's what you can do to make this school campus more bike and pedestrian uh, friendly, which uh, if we still have it, uh, if I get a copy of that, I'll send it to everybody on the committee so you'll be able to see what we asked the school district to do. And I point out that the bond issue did pass. So the school's got 62 million in one bond and another 18 million in another. So they're getting the money to make improvements to the school. And so from complete streets, we're saying, you need to do these bike and hike improvements on the campuses so people can walk and bike to the schools. And then finally, to the town board, uh, at our last uh, committee meeting, we're recommending a sidewalk on Plum from Van Antwerp Road just to get into the Hillside School campus. It's about one or two houses, and Jim Levy and Laura pointed out, and maybe even Gene Foti, <laughs> that there's a homeowner uh, on Plum and, and um, Van Antwerp that's amenable to having a sidewalk on their property. And so we'd like to have the town consider doing that. Then also we there's a lot of kids that walk and parents on Cornelius to get down to Hillside Elementary. And we feel like those folks ought to be on a sidewalk. And uh, I guess on complete streets where we're asking the municipality to do something, we want them to concentrate on getting access to the schools and trying to look at, here's a block here, a block there, that would really improve bike and pedestrian access. So we'd like them to do those two things. And uh, then number three is the sidewalk uh, on Birchwood that would run along Birchwood Lane that, uh, again, there's a lot of homes uh, that have elementary school kids that uh, drain down to Birchwood that if they had a sidewalk there, they could actually walk to Birchwood Elementary School. So we put that on our list. So uh, some of these are kind of the same priorities that you know, we've carried over from last year, but we haven't seen any action on them again. And to follow on Paulina's point, we're going to send the letters. And then I think we ought to just have some appointments. So we meet with Cosmo Tangora. And you know, we sit down with the uh, improvements to all the school campuses to point out what we had in mind, 
to make sure that he and Howard Schlossberg, the president of the school board, know that, hey, these are good things that you can do and you may have the money to do it. Uh, good. And we can schedule an appointment with Roy Fluman and, you know, talk about uh, Rosendale Road and the other crosswalks that we want and the same for the state. So um, I guess uh, I know we have other business we want to get done. I'd just like to ask uh, for committee approval that we um, authorize uh, me and uh, and to uh, sign these and send them to the town supervisor's office in the hopes that the town supervisor will uh, support these and that she'll send them to these other bodies. So anyway, <laughs> sorry for going on so long, but that's uh, that's the proposal and uh, um, I'm looking for a second to send the approve these letters and send them on. Yeah, Bill, I'll, I'll make I'll certainly make that second. Okay, second by Jim Levy. Uh, if you're okay sending the letters, why don't you raise your hand and um, okay, Lisa, Carla, okay, everybody in favor, good. So uh, we'll send those letters along. And Paulina, if you see something that you want to make a priority, then hey, let us know and we can adjust things on the letters next year. And, uh, and I would just like to change that last line that says please reach out with any questions or concerns we'd love to talk to you about our priorities i'd say like uh we'd like to discuss these issues with you and move them forward or make them a priority for 2021 and we will be contacting your office to set up a meeting to discuss these items so okay. it's like a definitive thing that we are doing that they know that we are going to contact them and what the next step is so that it's not a really vague ending of what's going to happen next. That's okay. that was my Good own, idea. My own. I just want to in support that, Paulina. Are you okay? I feel like you were just, I loved what you just said. Do you have it written down or did you just yes. that? I just okay. wrote it down. Can you email it to me? Yeah. And like with the board's permission, we'll just change the last paragraph to that. I think that's a great yeah. idea. Great. I'll do it right now. Thank you. Okay. Good. Uh, Moving on, the complete street survey, we uh, sent that out. Thank you, Laura, for making it part of the blast. And uh, we got about 365 responses. Um, Laura and Jim Levy and I and other folks, uh, we worked on the questions and finally got it out. We got lots of replies. And uh, um, Jim, do you, do you, are, are there a couple of highlights you could mention to us today with the possibility of uh, a follow-up of a little bit more detailed summary at our March meeting or what do you, you don't think? you don't want me to go through all 365 <laughs> well, uh, um, not today so, I guess. Um, us all, but. So, so so we did get 365 responses 100 percent completion rate um, which is phenomenal especially considering it took almost nine minutes on average for people to fill out the survey which is a pretty long survey so I think the response is is really good. I think it's really good uh, regardless, but but that certainly I think makes it even more impressive. Uh, and 224 of those responses came in on the first day. So we got a really good push um, on day one. And within three days, 330 of those 365 responses came in. So that kind of goes to show that when we put these things out, people typically respond pretty quickly thereafter, or then you know it kind of tails off. Um, so that was fantastic. A um, couple of quick highlights. Uh, the number, the, one of the questions was asked people the number, um, the amount that they walk essentially, and the number of people that responded that they walk three to five days or five or more days a week increased by 15% um, for both of those, those questions uh, among the respondents. So that shows a, a, a lot more people are walking more than they used to prior to the pandemic. Um, overall impression um, is that People's impression of safety in the town really hasn't changed since the pandemic began, so they don't feel that it's any better or any worse. And we have discussed in the past the, the thought that people might think it was worse because there's been more speeding um, and there have been other issues since there aren't as many cars on the road. And then, you know, beyond that, we've got hundreds of comments we're going to have to go through. I think we've got potential demonstration project locations. Uh, we've got contact names that people gave us to reach out to. Uh, hopefully some of those contact names are also demonstration locations so that we can tie those two together and again kind of have a local um, representative who wants to see those things happen. Uh, there's high support for both crosswalk proposals on Knott and River Road. Um, 
there is a lot of support to continue the annual event that we do, the annual Complete Streets event that we've held. Um, lots of ideas for different demonstration project locations, as I said, and 166 miscellaneous responses that we'll have to go through and see what it is that people uh, wanted us to know. So there is a ton of data and a ton of information for us to, to kind of go through and, and figure out you know, how we want to process and, and move forward. Uh, so I would, I would call the survey a, a really good success and we'll figure out how we you know, do or don't want to push it out again in the future or do something like it. Um, is there some way folks on the committee can help? I mean, uh, would one um, committee member need to take a question to try to summarize the comments or how can we take some of the workload off of just one person to kind of process what we learned here? Yeah, maybe uh, Bill, you and I could talk about that offline. Um, everyone should have received the the link to the uh, to the dashboard to be able to view the com the, the results. Um, we'll, we'll include that Bill in our summary of this meeting that we send out. You know, the quick bullet summary. Um, I mean, maybe you and I could talk about offline. Need to remember to try to boil everything down, and so if, people, if we can divvy the work a little bit, that might be helpful. Yeah, so, so Survey Monkey provides some of that, but it's not going to provide us that help with the comments. And there are a lot of comments to go through. So um, let's let's talk offline about how we can get people involved in that. That's probably good to kind of divide that up and uh, and try and pull that together. Okay, good. But anyway, uh, it, you'd say it was encouraging, right? What we learned and uh, it got a pretty good response and uh, we're going to leave it open so other people that tune in can, can chip in as we go along and... Uh, yeah, I mean, not not everyone was absolutely positive about everything, um, which would be expected. And um, you know, we, we've had a couple of people trickle in with responses over the last week or two. So, uh, so they're still coming in. A couple here and a couple there. Um, could I just say uh, the two things that might be a little bit of a priority are the crosswalks at Knot and Regent, and the crosswalk at St. Joseph's and River Road. That we may want to summarize that and push it to the county so that we they know we've done this survey. And in addition to our traffic counts, that there seems to be some pretty solid support from the public for crosswalks at those intersections. So yep. that, I, I, can, I can pull those together pretty quickly for you, Bill. Okay. That's easy. Okay, good. Um, number three, a subcommittee for 2021 demonstration project. Uh, I mean, at the meeting today, uh, we had some ideas on uh, Fieldstone, um, certainly Wyoming Avenue, um, maybe some things that will be generated from looking at the data on the survey, but um, I'm just wondering if there are uh, some folks on the meeting today that would like to uh, get started on thinking about a, a demonstration project for 2021, what that might be and what we might have to do. And, uh, you know, I'm waiting for somebody to say, Bill, those tires are magnificent. We got to get them out of the shed and we'll, we'll put them on Fieldstone. We'll put them on Wyoming. We'll <laughs> uh, that's an in-house joke, I guess. But anyway, do we have some folks that would like to, uh, you know, three people that would be willing to step forward uh, for a demonstration project for 2021 to kind of sort through the ideas we've had and, you know, select something. I'd like to help out with it. I. Okay. Carla has volunteered. Anybody else would like to join Carla on a demonstration project for 2021? Paulina? Jim, I'd like to. Jim Levy? Yeah. Okay. When, when were you going to try to hold it this year? Well, I was thinking about three weeks from today. <laughs> Get the fire signed up, Bill. Is, Maybe September or October or something like that. Same, you know? same time frame. Okay. That's I mean, if the folks on Wyoming or the folks on Fieldstone, actually, if the Fieldstone people say we don't want to wait and we have the police department behind us on giving something a try, that the police have been getting contacted by the folks on Wyoming or the folks on Fieldstone. And instead of pushing back on us, they're reaching out to us to say, hey, these folks have got a traffic problem. We can't put a police officer out there and write tickets all day. We need something that's uh, more structural in nature that we think will help slow traffic. And, you know, even if we said, let's try a couple of speed platforms on Wyoming, or let's try some chicanes and some street trees on Fieldstone States to see what that does, um, we could even do a couple. And uh, I think, um, you know, ideas where we're, we've heard from residents, they want something, and they're, 
they may be open to giving something a try that we won't get the pushback we got from residents on Regent that, hey, like you're doing a project, go do it on your own street. We don't want it on ours. That if we're working with a street where people are tired of the speed and you know would like us to give something a try, then that's where we want to go. And so we just need to kind of focus on, here's a couple streets where the neighbors say they've got a problem. We need to do some thinking about what might work, which means our subcommittee probably would need to go over and walk from State Street over to Console Road on Fieldstone, see what there is there to try to say, you know, if we did the stop sign or we did a bump out at this intersection, if we did some chicanes and some street trees, uh, that might work to take a, a walk on Wyoming and, uh, you know, get the data from the PD on how many cars, what the speed is, you know, what might work and, uh, and, and give them a try. Uh, you know, I mean, that's kind of what we're here for is we, we're in the business of traffic calming, making our town more walk and pedestrian friendly. So uh, if we keep working on our solutions book that we're trying with traffic calming things, I think it's almost a gift that we have some streets that, you know, want some help. So we look at what might work and we come up with a proposal and do something that, uh, that might work. And I think if we get something that we try, that we actually have the police data now on how many cars and how fast they're going on Wyoming, how many cars and how fast they're going on Fieldstone, that you put in a traffic calming device and then you look at the data, you know, a year after those are in place or after your demonstration project is in place and you say, yeah, the, the traffic is lower and uh, the residents are happier or whatever it is. So that would be the model. If we okay. end up, oh, sorry. Um, I was gonna say, if we end up holding it after vaccines are available and after the pandemic, then I could help as well. Okay. But if it is three weeks from now, then. No, I was only joking about the three weeks. Oh, okay. I, I'm just. Uh... <laughs> You're just Bill. Bill trying to make me about it, at least. But uh, uh, you know, we give ourselves time to put stuff together. So uh, let's add Elise to the list. She'd like to help out with the uh, subcommittee also. So we've got some. Well, I have to give you a 15-minute warning, and I apologize about that. But I have a pretty hard time stop time at four. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let's talk just quickly about meeting times for a second. Um, uh, do you want to go back to our 9 a.m. or 8.30? Um, let me ask Elise, if we met at 8.30 or 9, is that a possibility for you? Would you be able to ask your school instructors for one hour a month to come to a meeting, or would that be a, a no-no? I guess I could, but if it takes an hour and a half, I'd be missing a couple of classes. Okay. I think three different ones or four? Oh, well, that's not that so point. good. Um, well, um, how about the working folks here, uh, uh, David and Jim and um, Tess and everybody else, uh, can we go in the afternoon? Or uh, if we started start at 8.30, Elise, would that make a difference for you instead of nine in the morning? Or would that still be a triple play? To um, depends on how long the meeting goes, but if it's more than 30 minutes, which of course it would be, then yes, I would still be missing stuff. Okay. And when the pandemic's over, I'll start school. At, I think it starts at 7.40. Okay, yeah, we weren't sure what time in the morning it started. And it's like during the we, pandemic, it starts at 8 30. Okay, but if we did like a new meeting, you're still in school too, right? So it goes from like, let's say normal time, 7 45 to like 2 30. Okay, so and the thing I talked to Bill, it's not like I want another nighttime meeting, but so anytime between 2 30 and nighttime is actually a possibility then. Later afternoon meetings, I can, I can make a make room for I apologize for having to I mean I might have to join late or leave early like like I joined late today but I appreciate it and it's great to have you know young folks who are um, interested in this so whatever we need to do on my end okay this is Jim I'm in the kind of same boat if I know in advance I should be fine uh, Mondays are no good for me I'm, I Mondays are pretty busy but other than that as long as I know in advance I should be able to work my schedule around it for the most part 
Well, uh, what about 2.30 on Friday then, what we settled on today? I mean, could we live with that? Or do um, you think, especially if you know it's coming? Um, anybody here have a problem with 2.30 on Friday as our new meeting time? Okay. Oh, and then well, then we'll, we'll give it a try. I know that our schedule said that our next meeting was February 26th. Time to be determined, but our next meeting, and I hope you've all got the, uh, is uh, March. Uh, I've got a lot of papers here, so I probably already. March, it's March 26th. Because March 26th. Yeah. So, uh, Laura kindly sent out the schedule, so we'll meet uh, 2 30 at March 26th, and uh, our new meeting's time for, for at least that time and tentatively in the future, uh, 2 30 on uh, the last Friday of the month. And you got to adjust it if it's not working for people. It definitely works for me. So we can just see how it works, and then if we need to adjust it a little more, we can. Yeah. Well, we don't have Tess, we don't have Dart Strayer, and we don't have uh, Lauren Brown with us. So uh, we're. Or Pete Rebecca, so we we don't have four folks here, but you know, maybe uh, um, I know Dart has said sometimes afternoon meetings, you know, for people. But if he knows he knows it's coming, maybe he can uh, work around it. Yeah, we'll give it a Okay, I've got a couple more minutes on the standard traffic calming measures. On that, I, I guess I'd just like to say, uh, Pauline has gotten us started that I'm, I'm thinking, you know, maybe we need a workbook where we limit it to 10 things. And if somebody's got an idea about something else, we've got two or three things in there, but uh, we want to add maybe uh, street trees or uh, and we certainly the chicanes or speed platforms that really what we're looking for are really kind of a, maybe a workbook that's listed, limited to 10 things that we would suggest to the planning board, the town board, the conservation advisory council, the Niskuna PD, that uh, if you want to tra calm traffic in Niskuna, these we think are some devices that work. And uh, our goal is to have a little bit on the science about each one. I mean, studies that have been done that show they actually work. If we can find an example in the capital district where someone could drive in their car and actually see one, we could take some pictures that, um, even if we have a citizen like uh, Mr. Mastrioni or Fieldstone Estates or Mr. Brownsey that are asking, you know, what could we do? We know the highway superintendent doesn't like speed bumps, but he might be okay with a speed platform. And, you know, uh, chicanes, other things that, you know, we think are workable that we would encourage residents. We'd want to put those in our workbook. Um, Bill, can I ask you a quick question? Are, sure. spe are speed platforms the same as speed cushions? They, they might be, but you know, okay. that's something we need to look at. That in other words, it doesn't have the high bump where you you could hit it with a snow plow, but it might be, you know, four inches higher or something like that with a with a gradation. So you come down the road and you go up it and then you're you you'd notice it going in your car that uh, you'd have to slow down a bit, but it's um uh, it's more so a snow plow could go up over and go down, so you wouldn't wreck a snow plow blade with it and the snow truck drivers would know wh where it was, but it would be enough that, um, you know, your driver would have to slow down a bit to go over it. So probably a speed cushion, but that's exactly the kind of thing we need to resolve in our workbook is a speed platform, the same as a speed cushion, but different from a speed bump. And so uh, the speed hump, actually, are you describing the speed hump? That's actually made of like the asphalt or whatever. I know you're, yeah. we're limited on time, so I won't go on. But okay. Yeah, speed hump would be the same as a speed bump. But I think okay. the speed platform is it's kind of a gradual up and maybe you're up four inches or six inches okay. and, you know, you drive over it. So if you, some speed hubs, if you go over them, you really notice it and you get a dent in your muffler. But these would be more gradual and, they would get over the highway superintendent's objection to uh, it's hard on snow plows and the highway superintendent would say, if we put them on one road, everybody else in town is going to want one and it would be harmful to plowing of snow. And, and they also say, if you're riding in the back of an ambulance and you've got broken bones that somebody driving an ambulance over a road that's got speed bumps in it is not good either. So, but it's part of it is just making progress on our, our workbook so that, um, 
we've got some science, we've got some examples, so that if somebody on the planning board said, what, what is this? You know, we could refer to them, our, our workbook, and we'd have examples and we'd have the science and they'd be all things that we'd consider recommending uh, in the town. Okay, uh, the Complete Streets Connections for School Improvements. Uh, I asked, uh, you know, Laura for, for the memo we sent to the school district. As soon as I get a copy of that, I'll, I'll share it with you and, and we're gonna arrange, as Paulina said, we're gonna arrange for a meeting with Cosmo Tangora and the president of the school board and we'll go over what we recommended in there so uh, they know that we're serious. Uh, Complete Streets Accomplishments, uh, Laura gave us a few of those and um, those are some things that uh, I'd, I'd like to just get together for 2020. And uh, there are things that we put on the website that the uh, electronic complete streets map that Laura sent to each of you when we have our uh, presence on the website, we'd have what is the complete streets committee about? Uh, we'll have uh, our, our roster of member members. So you'd all be out there. We'd have the town complete streets policy. We'd have our electronic map uh, hopefully of uh, safe routes through the town and then uh, you know we we'd have accomplishments where you know we'd list the top 10 things that we supported that we got done in 2020 and maybe as we look back to 19 and 18 we could do that as well too so that if you're a citizen looking out there you say what is complete streets what do they do what have they done have they pushed for anything that's helpful to biking and walking in the town and, you know, we list our bike rodeos. We list the complete streets meetings we've had at Town Hall uh, to come up with things. And um, uh, that's what we'd uh, we put on it. So I'm going to be working on that. Uh, finally, um, before we go, if you've got five more minutes on the co uh, plaza, uh, Laura Robertson. So we haven't had a meeting since the first one that was scheduled. And Carla and Paulina and Jim all came to that first meeting. We're really helpful. We did have concept plans that were circulated by email about some of the upgrades and I talked to the engineers yesterday because what we want to do is kind of hone in on where you know we want to be as a town and what we think we can and can't do and then ask for public comment um, so that it's constructive and good public comment. Um, and I think one of the big things that we kind of landed on is that generally speaking um, when you convert a road to one way the engineers are you know we came up with some plans that could do that um, but the engineers aren't comfortable recommending that, you know, with the stamp in the engineering department without hard data. Um, and what they would really need to see is what the volume is before the county improvements and then what it is after. So we can have these plans and what we think is good to keep them kind of in our back pocket if they're needed, but really just take what data we can, um, even though it's COVID, there isn't any really way to go backward from that. We're just gonna have to collect COVID data and then, um, we can use that to see what happens um, after the, the plaza is constructed. And we do have a variety of ideas and treatments that could be used there. Um, but for the time being, I think we're going to set that aside and really focus in on the Crescent Clifton Park intersection improvements. And the first round that we looked at um, was mostly maximizing parking. And a lot of the comments that we got from different people who were reviewing it were we really needed to also consider sidewalks and pedestrian amenities. Great comments. <laughs> so they're going to do another um, drawing with the pedestrian amenities. And I think I'll circulate it one more time. And then the goal is to put those ideas out to the public and collect comments from them at the planning board meeting. We were hoping for March 8th, but it's looking more like March 22nd. Um, it's coming along. It's more expensive than I thought it was going to be. Um, but we do want to have these concept plans, again, for everybody's knowledge, just concept plan, <laughs> not full engineered. But we've gotten a lot of good comments and it's moving forward. And so for those of you on the committees, like I think probably look for another email in the near future. And then um, complete streets wise, obviously, I know everybody here pays attention and likes it when we're doing street improvements. So when we get that out, I would invite you know anybody to take a look at them and give us comments on them as well. Okay. Yeah. I, I know from the Safe Routes Committee and even Complete Streets that uh, sometimes uh, committees can uh, run out of gas if they actually don't see changes happening in the infrastructure of the town. And, I, you know, I think we've been successful in getting some things done. And I think that. Um, you know, some of what we've been pushing for, it's gonna take a little while for it to happen, but 
I'm, I'm encouraged that we've got some recommendations that are going places. And I actually think there will be some things uh, changing in the infrastructure here in the town that will be you know, rewarding to, to folks on this committee that uh, we've had some ideas and the town, county and state have all adopted some of those and put them in place to make the town safer. And uh, I, I've said before that, you know, if we're going to encourage people to walk and bike, if, if it's not safe, then we're encouraging people to do something that might be dangerous. And we don't want that. We want to make sure that we've got the infrastructure in place so it's safe to go from A to B and then encourage people to, to use those things. So anyway, uh, welcome to the new members. Thank you everyone for uh, joining the meeting today. We'll see you uh, next Friday at the March meeting and uh, we'll be getting some opportunities for everybody to chip in some labor power on the survey and coming up with a project for 2021 and doing some other tasks that we've uh, set ourselves. And uh, I did send the uh, objectives out to everybody. Uh, Paulina asked me to send our goals for 2021 out. So you've got those. If you feel like something is too crazy or it's not ambitious enough, or if you've got another idea that you want to add to the goals, let me know. So um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make, I'll make that, that motion. So, Thank okay. you. Moved by Jim Levy, seconded by uh, David Hogan Camp. So see you all at the next time, and thank you very much for coming today. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Bill. Thank you so much. Uh...